I took my little Rico GR3 to a small town in Manitoba and challenged it to take everything. There's a scratch on it. And challenged it to take photos of everything from high action sports to landscapes. Let's see how it did. Hello everyone, my name's Josh from Videos by Josh and this is my Rico GR3 camera. I love this little guy. Ever since I got it a few months ago, I haven't put it down, honestly, nonstop. I've been taking photos with it and I've absolutely loved it. For those not familiar with the Ricoh GR3, it's one of the most popular street photography cameras in the world. It's an incredibly precise tool for a specific type of photography. With a 28mm focal length equivalent lens and a 24mm sensor, not to mention in-body image stabilization and a suite of different cool film emulation profiles, this camera is really designed specifically for tight space urban environments, or at least that's where it's most popular. So, you know, of course, logically, with that street photography urban design pedigree, you would definitely take this to a golf course. Yeah, sure, why not? I took my Ricoh GR3 to the small town of Killarney, Manitoba for Canada Day 2023. And on that day, I went golfing with a group of friends and it was fun but I also wanted to take some photos and really test out the capabilities of the Ricoh GR3 in probably the environment it was least designed for. Really quickly, Killarney is a small town in the southern area of Manitoba. It's got a beautiful lake and it's known primarily for its agriculture, but it also has a beautiful golf course called the Killarney Lakeside Golf Club. And that's where I took this camera to take some pictures. Let's get into it. Actually, before we get into it, I just wanted to say that Despite really loving the RAW files that are coming out of this camera, I actually didn't shoot in RAW at all for this. I used Ricoh's film emulation profile that is positive film. It's essentially a picture profile that's built into the camera that's meant to emulate a certain style of film photograph. And I find the positive film to actually be super helpful and actually looks really good. So all the pictures you see today will have that positive film look to them. Okay, so the first photo I took of the day was literally a practice shot. So, you know, don't count this towards my, my skill total, but I was literally just calibrating the camera when my friend was standing across from me. And you can tell it's a bit blurry. I think it was at one over 160, you know, not, not really fast, but not really slow either. Still, I love the colors. Eh, looking good for the day. I think we're gonna have a nice round of golf. Next, I took some environmentals of the club. Here's a photo of the golf cart. I think it resolved nicely. And then we took this photo of the shed in which they store the golf carts. And I mean, you could just see the benefits of that positive film color profile coming to light. Look at the colors that are coming off this photo. You got magnificent reds, blues, greens, and this is all coming straight out of the camera, I might add. I actually really love this photo, even though the subject matter is pretty boring, the colors itself really sell it for me. And now we're gonna go load the bags onto the carts. So just taking a photo of the line of carts, I think you're gonna start seeing a pattern here with the Rico is that it, it handles dynamic range very well for an APS-C size sensor. It's still got all the details in the sky while maintaining some pretty crisp blacks underneath the carts. Another trend you're gonna to see today is some like fake out macro photography, just getting in close. The colors are resolving really well. My friend just had some colorful shoes. That's really what it is. I took, I took a photo of his shoes. I should probably say right now that the 28 millimeter lens, the bread and butter of street photographers across the world, is not necessarily gonna help you a lot on a golf course. It's a really wide lens. It's good for landscapes, um, and we will see some of those, but it's not great for action, as, as you'll see coming up. Or at least you gotta be a little more creative. I'll put it that way. Before we set off, we took to the putting green, and another d demonstration of the quality of the dynamic range, like not blowing out any of the whites, capturing everything nicely. I think it's gonna be a good day of golf. So on our first hole, one of my friends had to hit a ball out of the rough and I found this photo, this line of me sitting in the cart with kind of the, the fabric of the cart and the body of the cart, kind of making a frame around him essentially. And we're looking to capture those colors. So we got the blue shoes, the green grass and the red cloth and the pure white ball in the middle. And I'll be damned if I didn't overexpose that ball even once. Trying my best, because that thing is really bright. Camera holds the blacks well. And I think in some photos, some photos of this gallery, it'll be a detriment to have that 28 to be too wide. But for a photo like this, showing the environment and, and really telling a story, I like it. The next photo we have is of my friend teeing off, or I suppose ironing off, because he's actually got an iron in his hand. And you'll notice uh, that unfortunately, the color of the grass kind of got away from me a bit. I don't know if I was on auto white balance or I calibrated a bit wrong for this shot, but you can see kind of a stark change from green to yellow. So obviously, watch your white balance. 
you know, unless you're going to edit it after the fact, don't, don't let it get out of control like I did. But still, technically, the photo does a good job. Uh, it was super bright, I think needless to say. The Ricoh does have built-in ND filters that help to kill some of that light, but I was still shooting at a substantial aperture and a fairly high shutter speed in order to capture the action of the swing. And I did, but unfortunately, I think the club and his body to a certain degree do get lost in the background because you don't have that blur separation. I probably could have done it better if it wasn't happening so fast. And I do trust the Ricoh's autofocus to acquire a subject and really hold it for that shot. So if I were to shoot it at a 2.8, I'd still feel confident. But overall, there's some nitpicks with this photo. I think I could have done better. I think my favorite part of the photo is that I still see the ball by his feet though. So either this was a practice swing or he did a really bad job. The next photo is a similar one, although it's taken from behind and of a different person. This one's a practice swing and you get the club in the air. Shooting at a fast shutter speed, I didn't get any motion. But you can probably see what I was trying to do here, like the partition of the trees along the side, and then you have the person in the blue right down the middle. I don't think the 28's doing me any favors in this one. I think I could have benefited from a longer telephoto, perhaps even a 40 like is available on the Ricoh GR3X. But um, in terms of a story, I mean, you get everything that's here. The colors are nice, and the picture is very sharp. This one's extra saturated. Again, I don't know what happened here. We got a little more saturated on this one. And I would say this is probably the, the worst scenario in terms of dynamic range for the little Ricoh GR3 in that you're, you're trying to battle incredibly dark shadows under the canopy in the car. And the sun, as you can see, the haze is starting right above the, the frame. So the sun was probably peak and there is probably, you know, 12 or one or something like that. And um, despite that, I think the camera does really well. I think you're fighting it a bit. You're fighting the light and you're fighting the angle. But the Ricoh allowed me to turn a almost unsalvageable photo into something that's still worth showing to people. This is kind of like a textbook golf shot where you have the tee off and then you get to see where the greens go or kind of like the line that the drive goes. Really all it's missing is that ball in the air, but I'll be damned if I, you know, capture that with a 28 millimeter point and shoe camera. That's too much to ask. I like the look, the shutter speed functioning well. You can see there's no blur in the subject. Everything's sharp. 28, not really doing me any favors, but it's more of a landscape in this one. You know, if you're looking for that documentary style, as you probably are, if you're shooting with a Ricoh GR3, you're getting it with this camera. Here we go, an actual shot where the Ricoh GR3 shines. A, uh, a close-up shot, or kind of like an environmental shot of the grass that my friend dug up when he hit an iron out of the rough, and he dug up almost the entire turf. It was stuck to his club after. And uh, it was a quick shot because he was just holding it up to kind of gawk at it. I only had it for a second, but I snapped it. The back is still pretty overexposed. I think you're seeing a bit of white clipping in the background and obviously the subject's a little dark, um, but this isn't really about the technical application of the photo. This is just more about the moment that we were trying to capture and the Ricoh did it for me. Here we transition into some massive environmental shots. So this is actually hole 10 at the Killarney Golf Course. You can see my friend in a cart just driving over to the side. I probably would have liked him to be down and to the left a bit, kind of in that major green spot. But as you can see, the subject here is really the green and the sky. The Rico again, doing a great job capturing dynamic range. And I really like the blue and the green of this scene. It looks really nice. Great job, little Rico. I don't know when it happened, but you can actually see that my, uh, my front shade, I don't know if you can see that, but it's covered in scratches and little dings. Um, these cameras, they, they can take a beating, uh, but they certainly start to show their age and their patina. I'm already getting some paint worn off the edges. I suppose that makes me officially part of the Rico Club. One of my favorite shots of the day, a mixture between kind of like an environmental portrait and the landscape. I love the green and the blue separation. The dynamic range is great. But what benefited me is that the sun was slightly to our backs, which helped me illuminate the subject. You can see my friend set up really nicely to hit the iron off the tee. And uh, despite not really knowing where he's hitting, the, the fairway is a bit ambiguous in this. I think it really tells a story. It's nice. You could see the little white tee box markers and the holes or trenches that other golfers have dug in. I'd put this photo on social media. I think it, I think it looks cool. Here's a bit of a switch from the norm. The Killarney Golf Course is next to a row of houses and cottages. It's a lakeside town, so obviously there are lakeside properties. And one of them had this cute little red house with this red truck. Funny thing happened with the camera here. I must have had it on auto white or something like that because you can see the white balance change just a touch. Everything's got a bit of a purple or magenta hue. Other than that, uh, I think everything resolved well. You have a lot to keep in focus on this one, but the road looks nice, the sky looks nice, and I think the photo looks nice. Here we have my friend waiting at the tee box. He's holding a golf ball and just kind of posing. I think he's actually watching my other friend just 
get ready to hit the ball or he's waiting for his turn. And um, you kind of like have a cool point of view bystander shot. I think it looks nice. At, at this point, you can probably see that there is a, a slight vignette on the stock photos that come out of the Rico, as well as a bit of 28 millimeter distortion. This stuff you can clean up in Lightroom with a profile. It's very easy, as well as the additional chromatic aberration. But for this stuff, I just left it in. You know, it's not, it's not an important photo or client photo. This is just stuff I'm taking on the weekend. The final photo we'll be looking at today is a photo that I took more for texture than anything else. I love the repeating pattern of the green contrasted by the color of the putter and the color of my friend's shoes. Also, the shadows look really cool. Another example of the gray Rico maintaining dynamic range. The texture's great, it's nice and sharp, and I really like this photo. I honestly think it could be like the background or the header for like a golf store or something like that. It looks really cool. And that was my experience using the Ricoh GR3 to shoot sports and landscapes at a golf course. And honestly, I really liked the experience. Of course, would you rather this or a giant mirrorless camera with a telephoto lens? Well, obviously the bigger one if you're shooting professionally. But slipping this in my pocket and just using it casually throughout the day was a fun experience. There were even a few times where I hit some drives and this was in my pocket. Like, it's really just a small camera you can put anywhere. And I will say that the battery also lasted the entire day. Uh, not typical on a Rico because the battery life is usually pretty short, but if you shoot sporadically and keep the screen off, you can actually get pretty good run times out of this little thing. Let me know if you have any questions. A sample gallery to the photos that I presented here can be found in the description below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.